Welcome, welcome to Modern Leadership Live, where we create collaborative conversations to connect our company cultures and our world community. I'm super excited because today I have Julie Wadler, the founder of Incubator Coaching and president of Epiphany Productions here with me. And she is one of the most present leaders that I've met. I've had a short meetings with you, Julie. I've heard about you through leadership circles. I follow you on social media, and I know you have a lot to say about what you think the world needs more now than ever as it relates to leadership. So welcome, Julie. Thanks for having me, Nina. It's great to be here. Julie, I know you're really involved in the community and integrating and having a stronger presence for inclusivity. And I'm wondering, what do you think modern leadership means to you? To me, modern leadership is inclusivity. It is opening the doors and bringing in everyone and not just bringing them in and counting them as numbers, but giving opportunity and resources to really even the playing field for uh, for anyone and seeking talent and seeking leadership in everyone. Wow. So it's not just about meeting a, a quota, looking at, you know, being, you know, I've talked to this many people, I've hired this many people. It's not counting it. It's really being with who's here, what do they have to offer that's, di you know, diverse in thought. Or maybe it is looking around and seeing, oh, wow, everyone here looks like me. What would it be like if I, if I hired someone completely different? Right. And I like what you said about diversity of thought, because that's part of it, too. If you don't have people, not just to look like you, but people with the same uh, similar backgrounds or sig similar perceptions of the world at the table, then you're still only seeing one side of the, of the picture, right? And it's about meeting people where they are. Really meeting people and seeing who they are and what they need to be on an equal playing field. Right. And we all come from different backgrounds and it's important to, to know what advantages I have, not just because I'm a white woman, but because I was college educated and my parents were college ed educated. You know, it, it's it's a deeper layer than just uh, the surface of I have a different looking boardroom. So also you said something like, you know, that there's really, you know, some deep listening about how I'm, how am I really including this person? How are they, did, are they feeling heard, right? As you said, talked about, you know, really making sure that their voice is a part of what's happening. Right. And it's not even just about hearing, it's about enacting, right? So you can have all the diversity and inclusion groups in a company or in a, in a organization, but if you're not implementing what comes out of it, if you're not lifting voices and and giving resources, then that's only you're only meeting part of the issue. Yeah, it feels like what also where I hear you going also is what are we to gain? Like how valuable is that? You know, to look at what might come from a conversation that I'm not even sure where it is, where it is going to go, right? And just to be lean into that unknowing and that curiosity and seeing it as an opportunity versus something to, to say, oh, no, I'd rather just stay in my comfort zone. Right. And it's good business. It's good business for lots of reasons, not the least of which is if you have, if everyone looks like you around your boardroom or around the senior leadership of your company, then that's the only market share you're getting. Uh, that unless if you understand uh, the broader market, you're not from the perspective of that market, then you're never going to reach them in any long term manner. But also, it's good for the community. You need to look like your community. You need to think comprehensively. Uh, it's really short sighted not to be inclusive. Excellent. What are some old paradigms that get in the way? You know, the most, I think, a deeply embedded paradigm is what you know, right? Mm -hmm. I, I know excellence based on my journey and who I've met and who I've surrounded myself with. And if the only people I've met is the one member of a different community who was in my fraternity 
or who I went to college with, then I am seeing a very skewed view of that community. Even if that person, you know, worked themselves up from from a uh, poor background to get in that space, I'm still not seeing the depth and breadth of that community. So it's it's moving out of like, well, I know that person. Thus, I know that community. No one person, no one group represents the entirety of a community. Where have you personally or in your organization stretched yourself as it as you consider this? Well, I mean, I do look around often and I'm concerned about how good, how how often I walk the walk that I speak, right? And uh, for me, it's very important, even when I facilitate conversations around diversity, to not just do it as a white woman, right? That either my own spiel needs to be informed, or I need to co-facilitate with somebody who uh, brings something different to the table. You know, I just can't show up and think that my perspective is complete. And I have to often remember, you know, you know this, Nina, that I am the only white person in my family. But that's not nearly enough, right? I can't, that's not a calling card. That is not who I am, it's who they are. And yes, they definitely inform my perspective, my family and my children most especially, But I'm in a constant place of learning and uh, opening up to perspectives I don't know. I love that you're in a constant state of, it doesn't, it sounds to me like you're in this awakening where you're like, where is my unconscious bias today? Who am I being today? And not looking to your other people for your validating who you're being as a leader. I love that, Julie, so much. It's so, I admire you for that. Thank you. But it's not, to me, it's not something to admire. It's something that I need to justify myself, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's a bit of imposter syndrome, right? Like, I will never know enough about this. I will never be as qualified as somebody else. So it is a constant state of learning. Um, You know, I don't believe in standing with someone in the, in a fight for inclusivity. I believe in doing the work. You know, it is not up to people who aren't already in the room to break down the door. It's up to us to open the door. Oh, man, Julie, that's so good. It's just, I think it's just my truth, right? It's, we, we I have firmly believe one more that. minute. I'd love to hear, what do you think is a bold prediction for leadership in the future? What do you see happening that you're like, this is going to happen? What do you see? Well, to me, the last several years is a symbol of mediocre status quo digging in their nails in the dirt as they're sliding down the cliff, right? I mean, everything we're seeing has been a a, a loss of power, right? And so who are they losing power to? Who's the majority losing power to? We're going to be a majority minority country in the coming years and more power to us. And so boardrooms and companies and organizations need to look different if they're going to reflect the country. And I think that scares a lot of people. And I think it excites a lot of us. Uh, So I think there's a predictability about what's going to happen as the country begins to look different. Uh, I mean, I I think it has to fully be actualized and that'll still take work. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Julie, for joining us this morning. And I want to thank everyone for listening. If you're a leader in an organization looking for business transformation, or if you're a woman in leadership, schedule a success call with me at 866-630-6334. And you can learn more about Julie. We'll put the link in the, um, in the description. And please, if you enjoyed this episode, hit subscribe, share it with others, post it on social media or better yet, join in on the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you, Nina.